Hello, in this video we're going to be building off of what we wrote last time. Um, last time we had uh, both a graph, a my graph class, uh, which contains a bunch of nodes, and we had this node class for the nodes inside of that graph, and the function we were working on was called find, and basically what it would do is it would search and see if we could find um, some node from our given starting place. And, um, and, and so we're doing breadth first search, and what that means is that we want to do all the children before we do all the grandchildren, before we do all the great grandchildren. Ba basically, we want to kind of explore near our starting point before branching out and, and going farther away. Now, whenever we explore or visit a child, we learn about a bunch of grandchildren, and of course, we have to eventually check them if we don't find what we're looking for sooner. And, uh, and, but we don't want to check our grandchildren until we've looked at our other children. And, um, and so our strategy has been to have a to-do list, right? When we discover more work to do, and, and by work I mean nodes to explore, we put them at the end of the to-do list, right? So they can't jump in priority uh, in front of other nodes, right? We are going to still do the children before any grandchildren, but at least the grandchildren will be in the list. And, um, and so last time we were running this on on this graph right here. And what we would do is we are starting from node B and trying to find our way to D. And so we'd have B, we'd start with that on our to-do list, and then we would check it, so that removes it. But when we check B, well then we discover C, so we put C on our to-do list. And when we check C, that comes off the to-do list, and then we add D back on because C knows about D. Then we finally we check D and, and all is well. And, and so then we return true, right? We found a path. Now, there are two things I want to fix about this today. Um, one is that uh, the code isn't quite right. Um, it turns out there's a, a, we can get an infinite loop. And that happens if I say I want to get from A, from B to A. Um, what we see is that we just kind of keep going around in circles like so. So let, let me hit interrupt because that's trying to keep looping forever. Let me just try to run this again. That's the first issue, right? Let's fix the infinite loop. And, and then second, we want to have a better version. Instead of just returning true, I found a path, or false, I didn't. Um, if there is a path, I'd like to actually know, well, what sequence of nodes do I have to go through? And that's going to be a little bit harder. So first, let's, um, let's start with kind of fixing our infinite loop. Um, I think the issue, right, I guess when I'm running it, is that I kind of keep going around the list. B discovers C, C discovers D, D discovers B, so on and so forth. And, and so maybe, I, I wonder if I could do something like this. Um, whenever I add something to the to-do list, I wonder if I could avoid uh, kind of adding them more than once, right? I, you know, once I've been to B, there's no sense in kind of putting on the on the B, on the list again, right? And, um, and, and so I wonder if I could do something like this. I wonder if I could do, say, you know, if not child and to do, you know, if I haven't seen this child before, right? If I haven't seen that child on that list, I, I'm going to try that, see if that works. And so let me run this. And again, I'm kind of having the same problem. I, I wonder why this didn't, didn't work, right? Um, why, for example, you know, I start with B, right? Why do I ever add B? back to the list. I guess here I add B back to the list, right? When I'm checking D, then I put B on the list. Why, why would I do that? Let, let me kind of scroll down here a little bit. I wonder if I can add a new node here, or new cell. When I'm, when I'm on D, I add B to the list, even though I've been there before. And at some point, right, if I kind of look at the beginning, uh, B was there. And, and so my problem, right, is that this to-do list is not a great place to check because um, you know, I'm not only adding to it, but I'm removing to it. So, so really kind of what I want to check is uh, not, well, well, what I don't want to check is it on the to-do list now. I want to check, has it ever been added, right? Maybe it's been removed, but I really want to know, well, has it ever been there? And so I'm going to have to have a separate data structure for that. And, um, and this is kind of analogous to what we had last time for depth first search. I'm gonna have a set of uh, visited nodes, right? And, and this is just a common mistake I see, and that's kind of why I, I did it here, 
um, these two ideas are different, right? One is, well, what are all the things we've checked? And another one is, well, what is actively on my to-do list? Right, because things kind of come and go on the to-do list, whereas this can only keep growing and keep just doing new things. So down here, what I'm gonna say is, if not child n visited, then, then I'm gonna add it, right? So then I'm gonna say, do that. And, and then I guess down here, I would say something like visited, dot add child i've checked this child before and you know i called it visited to make the analogy to dfs the depth first search before we had a visited there um this is a little bit different right because you know i don't really actually check the node until it comes around to the front right so so maybe a better variable name would be something like added right it's uh uh you know on the list once Maybe I'll call that added, and then down here I'm going to call it added too. It's helpful to kind of clarify these ideas to really be precise in our variable names. And um, and so maybe, maybe what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say previous added, just so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, I may run this now, and hopefully, right, if, uh, if I'm thinking about this properly, I I'm not going to have, um, have that issue anymore. And so I kind of go along, I'm like, well, I start with B on my list, I check B, and then I put C on the list. And so I previously added C, so then I check C. Uh, C puts D on the list, right? So now I've previously added D and C, so on and so forth. You, you know, one thing I'm seeing though, so it works, right? I mean, I kind of permit the um, infinite recursion, but I'm still checking B twice. Not not horrible, but, but I wonder how I would fix this, right? Um, how do I avoid doing it twice? Do you, do you see the issue, right? This is where I'm adding most of my children to the to-do list. And so that's why I put this down here. But actually, if I head back here, I see that I start with one on the added list. So, so really what I should do is something like this. I should say, well, I'm starting with myself on the list. That one's the one that gets added first, right? So, you know, I add the start node here. So I make a note of that. Then all the others are down here. So I'm gonna run that now and now I actually never visit the same thing twice. I, you know, I do B, C, D, and then we're done and we can conclusively return false. Um, we haven't, we haven't um, kind of hit the end. Okay, so this is great. Um, let, let's do this, let's do a more complicated graph. So I think, um, let me just get my example straight. Was this the graph I wanted to do? No, no, let's do something more interesting than that. Um, this is kind of a fun one. Right. Um, maybe just as a moment, let's kind of familiarize ourselves with the graph. Um, so, so let's say we're going to start for we're going to kind of be searching from A to Z. Um, so, looking at A, I guess how many children does A have? Um, I see two children right there. Okay, so A has two children. How many grandchildren does A have? Why don't you just think about that for a moment? It's actually a trickier, it's a trickier question than you might think. So I'm, I'm counting six grandchildren. Can you count the six as well? I think, I think the obvious grandchildren, right, are these down here, right? These are all kind of children of B and C. So that gets us to four and and I guess, well, Z is a child of C, which is a child of A. So I guess we have Z there too. So that gets up to, us up to five. So, so besides these five nodes, what is the other grandchild that's missing? Um, A, A is other grandchild. A is its own grandchild, right? Because A's parent is B and B's parent is A. So it has six grandchildren there. And so, so let's try to do this search and just kind of see how it, uh, and kind of what order it explores the, the children and grandchildren. So, so kind of what I'm hoping it's going to do is, well, we'll start with A, and then it's going to do B, C, and, and then only at the end will it finally check all of these uh, grandchildren. Right, so, so let's, let's do this. So I'm going to add this back, and, um, and let's try running this code. So I run it. And so, so what happens here? Okay, so I start, you know, A is on my to-do list. And when I check A, 
I learn about B and C. That's good. And so at this point, I've already added C, A, and B. I'm never going to add any of those again. Uh, then I check B, right? So B is at the front of my to-do list. And, and so I still have C, right? I mean, C is still on my to-do list. It's just kind of has moved up after I pull off B. Uh, but in the process of, of doing B, I discover these two down here. I discover D and E, right? So, so I'm kind of, you know, I remove B, check it, and then in the process I add D and E. Okay, then, then I check C, and then when I'm on C, well, what do I do? I add, you know, I remove it here, right? So I have D and E are going to be at the front now. And, um, and then at this point, well, what do I do? I'm adding all of C's children, right? So I'm going to add all of these down here. And so C has these three children, like so, right? That's good. And, um, and then kind of going from there, well, what do I do? I just start working down this list, right? And, and at this point, I've added everybody to the list at least once, so this kind of just keeps things smaller, right? I just kind of keep removing things off. There's nothing new to add because I've added everything. And, and so eventually we get down to Z, and Z is the very last thing we check. What I'm seeing here is we can do a slight optimization. We can return a little bit earlier, right? Kind of as soon as we're doing the adding, um, then we might notice, right? So, so is that true? Well, you can see that there's kind of this trade-off between optimizing the code and um, elegance, right? So what I'd like to do, right? I should finish a little bit sooner, is at this point, right? If I checked here, I'm like, oh, I'm adding this child and I know that's a destination. I could I could return right here. Um, for me to do that though, then I'd also have to worry about where I'm adding up here. And so I'd kind of have to have this check showing up in two places, both up here, down here. So I'm just trying to leave it as is for now. And so the code's working and, um, and then we'd return true that we found the path. So let's start, move on to the next step, which is how can we actually find the path? I think the path should be um, A, C, Z, right? So what we want to get, I want to find A, C, Z, not something like this. We wouldn't want to get like um, A, B, E, Z, because that's the longer, right? So we have to add this somehow or find this somehow. And, and so what we have to do is after, when we kind of get to this point, we have to do what we call backtracing. How can we kind of go back and see how we got to here? And that was kind of an easier thing to do when we were doing depth first. Uh, search, right? We could just kind of return our path and then with depth first search, we'd say, well, here's a node I'm on. So I know how to get to my child and my child knows how to get to the destination. Therefore, I know how to get to the destination. This is a little more complicated here. We're going to have to have some extra state. And, and so we're going to do it like this. Um, we're going to have another node here, right? So maybe I'm going to say um, self.finder equals none. And this will be node that discovered me okay and, and so what what does this mean um how how am i going to use this so so kind of looking down here when i check a then that's how i found out about b and c so what i'm going to kind of the way i'm going to talk about this is that a is the finder of b a is also the finder of of c right a is how we got to these right so b.finder will equal a and c.finder will equal a. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna have to set that, right? Whenever I add somebody to the to-do list, I have to make a note here of how I found it, right? So this child.finder, well, it's going to be this current node we're on, right? Whatever current is. When I was checking cur, that's when I found out about this child. Right, so the child will point to the node that found it. And, and, and kind of looking at this, you can imagine some of these, right? Like look at, look at Z, right? Um, eventually, you know, I explore both E and C, and you can imagine them both trying to add Z, right? But it's, well, whoever found it first, right? Whoever, whoever is the one who appends it, the to-do list, that one's the finder. And, and so just the way we're, we're exploring, right, C is going to be the finder. C is going to be the one that adds Z to the to-do list. This one's not going to get any credit. 
if that makes sense. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm doing that. And, um, and, and so maybe as a first step, maybe instead of returning true, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna return, I'm gonna return the node that we found, okay? So I'm gonna do that. And, um, and, and let me run this, let me, you know, I'm gonna clean up some of these things for now, right, just so we can see more. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, this is my destination equals this. And um, maybe I'll just print my destination. Okay, so, so I'm kind of getting all the way down to the Z node, so that's good. Um, and, and so maybe I can just kind of, can I do it intuitively do something like this? I can say, well, who found, who found that? Uh, yeah, well, C found Z. And well, what node, what node <coughs> found the node that found me? <coughs> And that would be A. And, and so kind of the trick here, right, is I want to kind of glue these things together into a path, I guess in the opposite order, right? I want to say, you know, I want to start with this. I mean, this is where I started, and then kind of going here, and, and then kind of going here. And, and what if I tried to go one more step? I said finder dot finder dot finder. I, I would have none, um, which reminds me, right? I mean, that'll be kind of the end of the chain um, if I kind of do another search here now, starting from another place, I, I want to make sure that these finder variables start off as none. And so that's actually something I have to do here, right? I should have to say self.finder equals none, because that's my starting point. Nobody found me. Now, almost what I want you to imagine, right, is that we kind of have two structures going on at the same time. Um, we have all of these nodes, right? And, um, and they have references to other nodes, right? A has a reference to B and C, right? Those those references are in, in the children, right? So, so I can think of all these nodes being part of a tree. I can also think about um, some of these nodes being part of a linked list, right? Because here I have a reference to a node and, and kind of what I'm ending up with at the end is that Z is a reference has a reference to C and C has a reference to A. And, and so I'm kind of imagining that in addition to all these nodes being part of a, of, a, of a graph based on the children attribute, the path I find is also part of a linked list going from C, Z, Z, C, A, right? And so if I have some strategy for printing off a linked list or something like that, um, then I can make that work. Yeah, I'll be able to figure out what the path is, okay? And um, and so let's do this. Let's add a let's add a function here, right? I want to be able to print off, you know, kind of glue all these things together. And, and so I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say um, define. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll call it backtrace, right? I'm trying to figure out how I get to some place, and um, and how how am I going to do this? I'm going to say self. Um, you, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to kind of add all of these things. Uh, to the same list, right? So I'm going to say something like, you know, I'm going to have a list here, and I'm going to say, add myself to that list, append self, and um, and then I'm going to kind of keep recursing, right? So let's say that was kind of destination, it's passed in first, I'm going to add myself there, and uh, and then I'll say if, if self.finder, not equal to none, right? So I wasn't the starting point. Well, then I'm going to say self.finder.backtrace on that same list. So, so I'm going to add myself to that list and then ask whoever found me to add them self to the list and kind of recursively so on and so forth. Okay, so, so let's do this. I'm going to kind of create my list down here and I'm going to say my destination node. I got, where did my destination node come from? That was what I returned when I actually got to the end. So I'm going to say Destination dot backtrace, and I want them all, you know, starting from that destination all the way back. I want them to add themselves to that list, and, and then I can print that L. And there we go. We have Z C A. I guess it's a backwards path, which is fine for now. Um, so that's all fine, right? This is a recursive version of it. So this is the recursive version. And, um, and we can kind of go through a linked list like this recursively. That's one way to do it. 
Um, just to kind of contrast, um, I want to show, let's do an iterative version. This will be old. I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, for the editor editor version, the way I can do that is like this, and have a loop. And and what I'll do is I'll kind of create my own list here. I don't need, really need to pass it in. I'll say I have my list there, and then I'll say um, you know uh, what, what I may do is I, I need to kind of loop. How can I loop over this and then this and then this and so on and so forth. A really common strategy is I'll say, well, what current node am I on? Is it destination? The destination is finder or the finder of the finder. And, and so I'm going to start with self, which is going to be destination. I'm going to say self. And then I'm going to say while cur is not equal to none. What cur will do is cur will be cur.finder. So, so do you see that? I might start on here and then it's going to be you know, destination. And so destination, I'm going to say destination at finder. Well, then when I run this, then cur will move over to this. It's going to kind of move along this chain until it hits none and then it falls off the end. And so what I can do is I can say l.append cur, just like that. And then when I'm all done, I can return this list. And um, this one's a little bit nice because now, uh, since it's iterative, I can kind of easily just create this list before I start doing it in my looping. I don't have to do it down here anymore, do I? I can do this. I can just kind of print off. Well, I guess I'm calling this version now and I don't have to pass anything in. L let me just do this and try to see how that works. And, um, and that works great, right? I have Z, C, A. Kind of this backward path. Now, the last thing I think that makes sense is that it would be kind of more intuitive to go A, C, Z. So I'm going to turn uh, this kind of to be reversed, like this. And, um, and then I get this iterator thing, which I want to just force to be a list. There's many ways to reverse things in Python. When I do that, I'm just trying to get, kind of get this nice list from the start to the end. And you know what? Actually, let's make it a tuple. So it's kind of like more like what we did with DFS. Okay, so this is pretty good, and, um, and I'm going to kind of clean this up now. Let, let's think about how to combine this, and I'm just going to delete this as well. We're just going to kind of end with the iterative version. Generally, it's more efficient to loop than to have recursion. So, so here, right, was where I actually find that final, final node. And so if I want to return a path, what I can do is I can just kind of call this right here, right? Right, right now I'm kind of doing find to get the last node, then I'm backtracing from it. Um, what I'm going to do instead is here, I'm just going to return cur.backtrace like that. And, and then, you know, if I don't find anything, I, I can just return none there at the end. Okay. Right, so when I actually find my destination, then I may return the backtrace of it. So I can kind of simplify all of this now. All right, let me, let me just do this. Can I find a path for that? Yes, I can. It's ACZ. Uh, what if I want to go from A to, uh, or, or let me do this. I'm going to go, this time I'm going to go from, let's say like B to G. All right, that's kind of interesting. And do I have a path? Yeah, I go from B to A to C to G. I can get there, right? Um, okay, so that's kind of cool, right? I can do this backtracing by just stepping back one node at a time, right? I'm appending to each of this list. Um, what what if I try to look for something that's not there, right? If I look for something like, um, you know, X. Uh, oh, I guess, well, X is not in there, so that's not going to be happy. Um, so I guess I'm kind of only allowed to do that. Um, so I'll just leave it there for now. Let, let, let's actually go back to this example. I think it was example two that we had. And um, maybe was it was it example? No, sorry, too many examples. But this one, this one is a nice one uh, because then I can try to look. Can I get from B to A, and and then I get none, right? Because there is is no such path. Whereas you know B to D does have such a path. B C D. Um, before I wrap up here, uh, I want to go to like one more example. So I'll say. I think, let me just make sure I have the right one here. Uh, 
let's just kind of um, trace through this. I, I think one more time, just to kind of wrap up. And what I want to do here is I'm just going to put my to-do back. So we can kind of see how it's searching through. Right, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to look again for g.find a to z. And let me print that. So I can kind of understand what it's doing. Right, so I start with A, and that's previously added. A discovers B and C. I've now discovered uh, B, C, and A. When I check B, then I discover D and E. So I'm going to add those after C. Right, so then I check C. And then here's where I finally actually have all the nodes on. Right here are all the, all the, all the leaves. Well, I guess um, all the leaves and E, which is not quite a leaf. Right, and then I can try to just keep, you know, taking these down until I just have Z left. And then here at the very end, well, Z has the finder. Z dot finder is C and C dot finder is A. And that's how I can kind of construct this uh, using the backtrace um, at the end. So I'm gonna have these two functions working together. Okay, so I'll end the video there.